Hello again everyone and welcome back to more Trails in the Sky. I'm currently still working on the side quests for the Zeiss area. We need to do the Ritter Road Monster. I'm still looking for the next book for the Temp Librarian job. Uh, this one I have no idea what I need to get. I may have to look that one up. Product testing, I'm still walking around and working on the shoes, and then I need to go talk to somebody in the central factory. So we're just going to work on getting a few more of those done for this episode. I get really nervous about missing side quests, so I like to just kind of go around and get them all done at once while I have them available. Are you Prometheus? No, you're Professor Russell. He was supposed to be. You should speak to Prometheus at the central factory. I thought he was supposed to be in the workshop. Oh. Excuse me, do you have a moment? Your name is Prometheus, right? Oh, he's in the design room, I guess. Alright, that's me. What can I do for you? I just need a few minutes of your time. We're actually looking for a vehicular orbital engine. We were told that you were the man to ask. Well, let me think. Sorry, but I haven't the foggiest notion. Huh? What do you mean? But we heard that you were in charge of vehicles. Aye, but that was years long past. I did carry out that task, but I switched duties from time to time. So in other words, I don't know exactly who you'd need to talk to, but it's not me. I'm very sorry. Well, crap. Is that all? I have a lot to get done. Sorry for taking up your time. Excuse me, then. Hmm, I don't like this. It was supposed to be a nice, easy task. A good deed we could do with almost no trouble. I I'm sorry. I wish I could be more help. Hey, it's no big deal. We'll just have to find some other means of getting what we need. Even if the trail has gone a little cold. Another means. Hmm. Oh, speaking of which, you have an idea? Well, maybe. What about that, you know, chapel thing? You mean the capel? That's the one. Didn't that have some information in it about the Hulage vehicles? That's a good thought. So if we take another look at the capel, we could probably find some useful info. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, and that is up on the fifth floor. Yeah, it was down here. Any weed vehicle powered by orbital energy, widely considered uncomfortable to ride and very limited in speed, primarily used for transporting cargo. Repositories, underground factory entrance. Okay, underground entrance. That's gotta be where we came in from the tunnel, right? This is how we got to the factory from underground. Oh, apparently this was the right way. I really am just no good. Okay, what's with the long face? Oh! It's just that my superior is kind of peeved at me. Very beautiful superior. <laughs> so, did you want something? Yeah, I just needed to ask a question. We're looking for a small orbital engine, the kind that fits into a Hulag vehicle. This looks like the right place to find one, but do you know specifically where we should look? An orbit for a Hulag vehicle, eh? And what are you planning to do with it? There's a vehicle up the road that's broken down. It looks like the orbital engine is the source of the problem. Ah, okay, no problem. You're just looking to swap it out then. That shouldn't be too difficult. There you go. It's the only one I've got, so make sure you don't lose it along the way. Thank you. Okay, let's take this over to Wong. They're probably still on the Trap Plains Road. 
You folks be careful too. We will, thank you so much. You'll excuse us then. Okay, that wasn't too bad. If I could find the door. Don't mind me, I just lose doors all the time. Okay, so that's back down on the Trap Plains Road. Might as well go turn that one in right away. Um, I should maybe rest first. They're actually kind of low on health. 120, jeez. I don't remember exactly where they were. I know it was towards the wolf fort. Oh, dang it. We're good to go. Right down here. Yeah, there we go. Hey, how's it coming? Welcome back. I don't suppose you found us a replacement engine, did you? We sure did. Sorry we took so long. Oh, really? That's a huge relief. I tried everything I could think of to get this thing started, but it was all for nothing. We were just about ready to give up and return to Zeiss. Really? Well, we made it just in time then. Let's go ahead and get the vehicle fixed. Yeah, we'll have this orbital engine swapped out in a flash. And there we go! Let's give her a whirl. Yep, she's good to go. Nice, now we can finally get that cargo moved. Your grandpa must have trained you. You're young enough to still be going to Sunday school, but you're amazing with machines. Well, we're gonna get out of here. You guys be careful. We'll talk again. Thank you for your help. Cool. Another mission down. Not gonna lie, I looked up where the second book is for the Temp Librarian quest. And it's in one of the places that we found an item. I said it was where we found the Sapphire Pendant, but I don't remember where that is. So I still have to walk around and try to find it. shows it between like four pillars so I know that's just in the map somewhere and like these are probably the four things so I just need to find where there's that many of them clustered together because I genuinely don't remember where the sapphire pendant was I remember finding it no idea where Jerk, you killed a cell. <sighs> what do I have to bring her back? I know the one down there did. I was just gonna see if there was a different one that I could get the recipe from, because I already have the recipe. That'll work. There. 
No, I know that recipe too. I don't want to fight you. Um, these maps are too big. I get confused. I don't think it's on this portion of it. Don't think. I don't know for a fact. Snake, I don't want to fight you. Okay. It's probably on this map, but maybe not. It could also be on the next one down towards, um, Elmo Village. I apparently missed this chest. This map is so big. <laughs> If I don't find it while just kind of walking around looking for it, I may just look up its exact location later. So I hate getting lost and I hate spending a bunch of time just wandering around. It frustrates me when I can't find where I'm supposed to be going. Oh. I forgot that I didn't come back for this one. I swear to God. Okay, I should probably bring Estelle back to life. This is actually going to be a decent amount of experience. Um, While we're at it, still heal yourself. <laughs> the other two are doing fine, you not so much. I don't remember where I found that pendant. I don't see anywhere where there's like four of the things clustered together. This almost is, but not quite.
Oh shoot, I forgot this is actually the main story quest. I shouldn't have walked in here yet. <laughs> wow, so this is Elmo, huh? I like it. Feels homey. Er, what's that smell? Joshua, did you... Oh, that's just the sulfur in the water. I guess that's just what happens when the water pours out of the hot, sp hot springs, huh? <sighs> really? It smells like someone left eggs out in the sun for a year. Well, if I hold my breath, it's not too bad, I guess. It's not as strong as usual, though. There's hardly any steam coming out. Maybe it's tied to the pump breaking down? Want to go ahead and see about fixing it? Oh, the key to the pump shed is back at the inn. Mrs. Mao has it. We'll have to get that first. No problem. To the inn we go. No. <laughs> We're gonna walk right back out. Because I didn't mean to start the main quest. Yeah, I have no idea where it is. I'm gonna look it up. I know that's cheating, but too bad. <laughs> I have no clue. I remember there being another small map sticking out of one of these, and I can't find it. Is it off of this one? Yeah. I remember having to come over here for something, but I don't remember what. did have the right area, I just couldn't find it. Hertz Adventure 2! Okay, we read the first Hertz, so I need to actually read this. Oh, 11 pages! Okay. <laughs> We're gonna do it. Encounter with the Spectacle Genie, Part 2. Those magical spectacle... <laughs> Off to a great start. Great start. Those magical spectacles must be capable of seeing the true nature of anyone who stands before them. After a fitful bout of shaking from excitement, but this time making sure to check that his own spectacles were aligned, the genie gazed down resolutely at young Hertz. There's no point in having a boy such as yourself hang out in such an invaluable item. In fact, it would be in your best interest to hand them over. Otherwise, it trailed off, but instead of elaborating on its threat, the genie simply extended its arms once more. This time, the genie picked up a boulder much larger than any normal person could lift, and young Hertz and Midas watched as the massive rock disappeared into the fiery depths of its open mouth. Pausing the wind to stir as it clamped down its distended jaws with incredible force, the genie gulped down the large rock as if it had been a light snack. And not a moment later, a hollow sound like something thrown into a deep well echoed in the depths of its belly. So have I made myself clear? If you do not hand over those spectacles, it is you who will end up being my next sweet morsel. Midas looked at young Hertz with a frightful gaze. D did you just see that humongous mouth of his? He's the real deal, all right. It's just like the rumors say. Yeah, but that still leaves us with another problem, sighed young Hertz. Without my glasses, I can't continue my travels. As young Hertz stood pondering his dilemma, another large boulder by his feet disappeared into the genie's voracious mouth followed once again by the ominous hollow echo from beneath its sable garb. But if he eats us, then we're both done for, argued Midas as he stood shivering with fright, imagining the candy he had swallowed not minutes before. I guess you're right, concluded young Hertz, and he stepped closer to the genie. All right, good sir, we'll give in to your demands. Being swallowed whole doesn't sound like much fun, he declared. And a wise choice you've made, boy, replied the genie. After taking a long look at young Hertz's face, the genie narrowed its eyes and a plethora of wrinkles crinkled about their corners. Young Hertz said nothing as he unseated the pair of glasses from his nose and obediently placed them at the feet of the genie. So these are magical spectacles, the creature said in a voice quavering with excitement as it squatted down, its face drawing closer to where they lay in the sand. Impatiently, it tossed aside its own spectacles, and after blindly searching by hand for the object of its fascination through the soft granulated sand, 
It picked them up and placed them snugly atop its nose. These are no less than magical spectacles indeed, it cried in a tremor of delight as it danced around, causing its robe to flutter about wildly. With these, I shall have nothing to fear. And with one last deafening screech, it disappeared just as suddenly as it had arrived. The drifting echo of its voice faded, and the two boys once again stood alone on a sea of white sand. Midas scanned the area around them. It looks like he's really gone, he said, his voice weak with relief. Indeed, there was no sign, as far as the eye could see, of the black-robed figure. Feeling a pang of sympathy as he looked at the side of young Hertz's face, who strangely enough seemed to be amused about something, Midas began to rummage through his pocket looking for a piece of candy to offer to his friend as a token of solace over the loss of his trusty eyewear. Walking up to the other boy, Midas held out the piece of candy, its silver wrapper half undone. Don't be disheartened, old friend. It's not like this is the last adventure we'll have. I think I'm going to be just fine, replied young Hertz. His voice was subdued, but the adventurer's eyes twinkled with laughter. Then, as if harking back to some past event, he continued his thoughts aloud. Ma'am, that genie must have been blinder than a bat with no eyes, he said in astonishment. Midas stared at young Hertz uncomprehendingly until the other boy turned fully toward him, a grin splitting his face from ear to ear. Then Midas saw it, and a smile of his own spread across his face. For there, resting on top of his friend's nose, was something which had grown familiar to him over the years. In the end, it seems like the poor fool managed to mistake his own glasses for mine, young Hertz went on in a comical tone. So the ones you're wearing now are... Midas asked, though the silver rims of the glasses had already confirmed it. Yep, they're the exact ones I put on this morning. With a happy air, young Hertz took the sugary treat from his friend and popped it into his mouth. However, this time, as the honeyed blaze of the candy balls they carried in their mouths melted away, both he and his friend made certain not to swallow them whole. You know, Midas said as they walked along, even if there were such a thing as magical spectacles, I don't think they'd amount to anything in his possession, because as you and I both know, he has a habit of losing them when things matter the most. We did it! We read all of Hertz's adventure with the genie. So now we will run back to the library and turn this into the librarian, and then turn in those couple side quests, because that'll be two more finished. Yeah, I'm going the right way. <laughs> For a second there, I thought I was going the wrong way. these people moved. It's not where they were before. And the library is on the second floor? I don't remember now. I think the second. The archives, sorry, not the library. Yeah. Did you find the book by any chance? <laughs> Indeed we have. Again, please check it over just to be certain. Yes, this is a genuine article, and that leaves us with just one left. <sighs> I need a break. What kind of book are we chasing down this time anyway? <laughs> I'll spare you the teasing this time. The last one is entitled 31 Cypress Trees. And here's its card. It's got more of that unusual writing on it. I, you three, one cypress trees, nestled atop the, this grassy hill. Afflictions of a far off lands draw nigh unto me like wine barrels, tumbling lightly down a soft incline as I drift into reverie, enveloped within the resonance of the tolling bell. The parentheses makes me think third floor, so it's three FL. I think I'm actually starting to get used to these. Another riddle. I guess so. Is this your specialty or something? Well, your task is the same as before. May Adios herself speed you on your way to success. Okay, we're going. Pardon us. 
Ah, one more book to find. And then we still have to do quite a bit of walking around for the shoes. I know we need to go to Lyston Fortress, and then if we go all the way to Erlen, we can get extra BP. But there. And we have a couple more turned in, um, so we need to find the other book still. Uh, potent ingredient, I have no idea what I'm looking for. Like, not even a hint. We still need to do quite a bit of walking around to finish that one, and we have to do the Ritter Road monster, which should be on the way to Lystrom Fortress so we can tackle this and part of the product testing at the same time. But we're gonna end it right there, and then in the next one we will work on more of those side quests. I think we'll try to finish those up in the next episode, but we'll see. It may take us two more, and then we'll continue on to Elmo Village. Thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed, feel free to drop a sub or hit that like button. Uh, I really appreciate the support and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!